Welcome to How to Create a New Portfolio with WordPress. Uh, this is Dana Watts, and let's see how it goes. So, first thing you do is go to WordPress. Uh, you, you go to or- WordPress.com, or maybe an already established blog, and create your blog. Um, so, this is a website that I created called ePortfolios for Schools, which goes through this process as well. Um, but it kind of sets up what it is that we're our end goal. So if you look underneath about me, um, these are all individual pages up on top. About me, um, I think students should reflect upon after school activities, community service, drama, um, possibly any sports that they may have participated in. Um, then they can have different pages for each year. Um, and it, it could be a progression. This is a middle school one, starting at year six, year seven, year eight, and then they can carry it with them into high school and do year nines, ten, eleven, and twelve. Um, but so in here, they would list any subjects that they happen to be taking that year and have um, a reflection page on their learning from that. In addition, uh, one of the nice things about a new portfolio, and one of the things that makes it nice, is the one-stop portal for parents. So if you look over here, you can create links to um, the student's email, to their grades, to the library, to the school, and then to any particular subject areas that they have. All right, so let's get started, and we'll start by making pages. All right, to add a new page, what you would do is you'd want to start right over here, and um, you would begin with whichever year in the education that the student's going to begin their e-portfolio. So in this case, I'm going to do year six, and then on here you just press OK and press Publish. The next thing you want to do is create um, subpages underneath each one of those years. So that's where you would add the core subjects that a student has. So for example, math, you'd add that in there. And then you scroll down. And this is where it looks a little different. Here, underneath Page Attributes, you'd want to list it underneath the year that uh, that it's uh, uh, pertinent to. So for example, this would be underneath year six. So I have a math subject underneath year six. And then right here, you would press publish, and you'll be set to go. What you want to have happen is you want to create pages um, that, and once they're created, so for example, you'll have year six, and then you have all these little dashes those mean that they're subpages that will fall underneath. So then when you go back and you look at the actual blog, you'll be able to see that they fall underneath that in the toolbar along the top. The next thing you want to do is create a links. Now the links are, um, you know, you can just click on them from the main page of the ePortfolio and they'll bring you back to important things such as your teachers, your school library, uh, your email, and things of that nature. So you would just click in here, and here you may say, um, email. Then you would post in the web address, your, your link back to your web address for your email at school. But then here you will create different things. So here where it says categories, you will either categorize them as an important link or a link back to my classes. So for example here, I would create that it's an important link. And here's an essential part. You'll want to go over to this target section and cl- click link. What that allows it to do is it opens it up into a brand new bra- into a new uh, tab on the top of your browser so that students and people who are looking at your ePortfolio can go back to your original blog and it will add it up on top. Then you come over, you say add a link, and you're good to go. This will create something that looks like this over here. So under important links, you'll get the email, the grades, the library, and school. And then um, you may want to list classes. So the next thing you want to do is link back to your core classes. Now I suggest that students start by ha- writing the main subject area in here. But this is where they could write whatever the name of the teacher is. Let's say um, M. Smith dot whatever your school may be and that will link them back to that blog right but then down here they can come down here and then they'll link it to my classes again opening in a new page 
But what that allows the students to do is then they don't have to change every year and say, oh, this is Mr. Smith's blog, and then you, as a parent or someone else doesn't know who that is. Each year, all they have to do is change this part here to, the, to their teacher's new blog, and then it's all linked in between. And then they would do add link, and they're ready to go. The next thing you'll do is go under appearance, and you'll go to the widget section, and um, these are a bunch of different things that you can add to your sidebar. But so on here, you will see links. And you just sit and you would take it, and normally it's over on this side, and you drag it literally from this side over here from the link section and drag it over into what's called the primary widget area. When you do that, the links will show up on the side and you'll be able to see them from there. So here, students will, um, the next part is creating categories because this will help them organize their blog. So they would come over here to posts, go to categories. And then from there, they would add categories for their main subject areas. This will help organize their blog as they continue to write and write and write so they can reflect on it later. So they might say advisory 8, French 8, humanities 8, math 8, and go through whichever subject area they're in. Um, they'd add that, and then the year that they're in that, and then they would just simply cl click on add a new category and go. Okay, and lastly, um, one nice added feature you can add to your ePortfolio is a homework calendar. And I happen to be in Hong Kong at the moment, so this is going to be in um, Mandarin, I believe, at the moment. But um, normally, right here, this would say um, the day. So you can, what you can do is have the students um, subscribe to their teacher's Google Calendar, and you can either see all homework posts by the day, by the month, but the nice one is this actually says agenda, and you can click on there and you can go through and see exactly what the agenda is for the day um, and what the homework is. So you can click, it's World Language Week, here's information, here's a link back to the teacher's blog, and then under here it says more details. And if they were to open that, it would create and show you, oh, here it is, and here's the exact assignment, and a lot of the times it will give you the project and you can attach like the Word document or a Google Doc to get back to the homework. But that's a whole other lesson for a different day. So this site here is a sample uh, year 7 e-portfolio that I created from different students' work at my school. Um, you'll notice that the header image is not a picture of the child. Um, it's a picture of many children uh, working together in the community I live in. Um, they were on a Week Without Walls trip. And so it helps uh, show that the kids are reaching out, but it doesn't identify any child in particular. I strongly emphasize that for students, that they don't want something that's going to pinpoint exactly who they are, but it shows something that they're interested in. Maybe a picture of a sports team in the middle of uh, doing something in particular, or an image from the drama show, or something that shows um, activity within the community. Um, and then here, um, that you can see that there's different pages within those. If you were to open it, um, you can see all the different pages that there are. And then there's sample reflections for each one of these. So if I was to go to math, you can see that here's a reflection from the student that they did on their learning. And for each one of those, there are sample reflections that the students could do. Um, feel, please feel free to go back and look at either this part here, uh, E just go to year7.msblogs.aes.ac.in um, if you'd like to see, see some examples of the way this looks when it's all put together, or go back to the original eportfoliosforschools.com and see different ways to do it. Uh, thank you, and good luck creating your ePortfolio.